Hi guys, Steve David Berman here with another little video. Um, this time, another lightweight video. Go figure. What you're looking at is just a, a simple bullet dynamics scene that I set up, and we're not really concerned about the bullet dynamics in this scene. We're actually concerned about the motion of the bouncing balls. And how do I get this trailing effect? Now, I rendered this without anti-aliasing, so the edges are jaggy, but this is a curious little trick. Um, you can see that sometimes something similar to this in video games, if you kind of end up kind of outside of the world somehow, and the background kind of gets all smeary, it's kind of like that. And I'll show you how to do that. And I also have variations where we can change the color over time, and also, let me skip ahead, do some kind of like light trail kind of a thing. And I'll show you how I set this up. It's actually a, a an old trick, a trick I learned a long time ago. So, um, and I think the original context was possibly doing light streaks on like taillights and motorcycles or something like that. But it's a it's a fun and interesting little trick. Okay, so let's load up my scene. It's just the scene is bouncing. If I turn VPR on, you'll see that it looks pretty much like the last one, except we don't see the the cylinder. I have a bunch of objects in here. Most of them are the spheres that are bouncing around. But see, we have. The, all of my objects except the spheres unchecked so the only thing that shows up is the sphere okay the first thing I need to do is I'll bring up my image panel first thing I need to do is go to the first frame where there's nothing and I'm just gonna hit F9 and that'll render out nothing okay so now let's save this nothing and I'll save it as a TGA although you should probably use a 32-bit format for this if you're going to do some of the, the more interesting color tweaks. Um, let's see now. Tiff, tiff, targa, targa32. Okay, so let me just save, and I'll make a whole new folder. Uh, trail test. How about that? Trail test. And I'll name the file trail test. Okay, let me open up that folder that I just saved the thing in. Okay, here's my folder with the uh, trail test image. I'm going to rename this image and put an underscore 0000 because I kind of forgot to in the first thing. It could be a 1, I guess. doesn't matter, but it just needs the, the numeric number in there. Okay, so now I have a blank image in there. So let me load that image that I just saved. Trail test 000. And it comes in as a still, which it is a still because it only has one frame. But I'm going to tell Lightwave that, hey, it's a sequence. You don't know this, but it's actually a sequence. And I'm going to say, hey, my f scene is 600 frames long, so let's make my last frame 600 frames long. And the same thing with the out. So we have a 600 frame animation. Only there's no 600 frames. Bling. Let me turn off a couple of things just so this renders faster in the test. So ray trace shadows is off, I'll turn reflections off, and let me turn off, okay, adaptive sampling is off. Okay, now for the output, this is an interesting thing, we need to change the output to be the exact name as the input. So our image sequence that we just made that exists of one frame, we just need to make the output of Lightwave to be that file name. So we're basically writing over onto the same file. Essentially what's happening is we are saving an image and then on the very next frame we're loading that image and we actually need to put this somewhere so let's put this on in the background. You might be able to put it on a on a surface itself. That would be kind of interesting. I haven't tried that per se but basically go to the compositing tab and under the background image, add your trail test sequence. And now, when I hit F10, you won't see anything. At, well, I have a starting at frame 28 because the ball doesn't come into the screen until about frame 28. So there it goes. It's bouncing off the screen, and it's coming back up. Just can't see it because it's below the recorded area. There we go. So we have basically, yeah, this image rendering over over itself again. Um, now to get the trailing off effect, basically we just need to go to the image editor. And now that we actually have some in there, we can even see what we're doing. Go to the editing tab and we can say change the hue a little bit. Just a little bit. I'll do 0.03 and even that's going to be a bit 
strong. Well, 0.05, that'll be a bit strong. And you can also adjust the con the brightness down, so point negative 0 0.001. See what that looks like. Now let's go back to my folder where I have all those images in, and I want to delete everything in there. That's not the right one anyway. That's my previous test. Don't want to delete everything there. Okay, delete everything except the first frame again. And now let's hit F10 again and see what we get. And how about that? Now the spheres are changing color. So, and you'll see probably that then them starting to get darker over time as well. Uh, if you start to see banding in here, which I think you will pretty soon, if not already, um, that's probably due to using an 8-bit image format. And I have another video on uh, different uh, types of image formats. So yeah, if you're using EXR or something that has a higher bit depth, you would probably get less banding. Okay, so that is it. It's actually ended up being a very short demonstration, uh, though it took a while to prepare. So thanks for watching, and subscribe to this channel if you like uh, interesting little tips and sometimes useful tips about uh, graphics software. Primarily lightweight, but sometimes I'll delve into other things. Or sometimes I'll just post experiments of my own up. So, uh, yeah, subscribe. Check out my tutorial videos at liberty3d.com. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.